Good morning, Salem family. I'm Minister Charles, your campus pastor here at Salem Bible Church, the Atlanta campus. Along with me, I have Minister. Hey, what's up? I am Minister Warren Hawkins III, and I serve as the campus pastor for our Stonecrest campus. Welcome to our online streaming service. We are excited um, to have you all here. Uh, myself and Charles will be both ministering to you side by side today. So, hey, it's lit, and we're excited. Yeah, the first time we're together. So here we are again on our third week of virtual worship. And yeah, we're apart socially, but we're still together spiritually through this virtual worship. So we have a message for both you, for all you guys today from both campuses yeah. about waiting on the right time. Mm -hmm. um, this Sunday is Palm Sunday. It is the beginning of Holy Week or Passion Week. And we all know what happens at the end of this week is Resurrection Sunday yeah. or Easter, some call it, when Jesus raises from the dead. So this Sunday symbolizes that beginning of it, and it's bigger than the palm trees, even though we call it Palm Sunday. So today right. we're going to dive into it, and we're just going to talk about it for, for a little bit and uh, see how you guys feel about it. Today's scripture is going to come from the book of John, the 12th chapter. We're going to start at verse 12. Book of John, chapter 12, verse 12. And then we're going to go down to chapter to verse 16. Mm -hmm. So you got it. Remember, you got, it. got to have your Bible out. We pay for Bible say. Remember, have your Bible, guys. All right, so it says, The next day a great multitude that had come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him. And they, and they cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. We move down to verse 16. It says, his disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him. And they had done these things to him. Yep. So, guys, for a little while we got to today, we want to talk about having the perfect timing. And, and it's all about timing. And this is such a big deal because this was the first time that Jesus had acknowledged that who he was really the Messiah. And this was a big deal for the people of Jerusalem, the people of Israel at this time. So if we talk about well, what is it, what do we mean by the perfect timing? Um, you guys may not know, uh, he was a pastor, Mason Bethel. Me and Mr. Hawkins know him as Mace. He was a rapper. He was a rapper for Bad Boy Entertainment uh, with, I don't know, is he Diddy now? He's P. Diddy. He used to be Puff Daddy back then. But Mace was one of his biggest rapper at that time um and all of a sudden mace laid down everything he gave away everything that was of value he gave away his range rover mm -hmm. he gave away his convertible he gave away his mercedes he gave away his rolexes he gave yeah. away everything that he come to him he moved to atlanta he became a preacher and not only did he do that it wasn't even a big deal to him so people couldn't understand why would he be able to walk away from everything to come and say, you know what, I'm going to start preaching. Mm -hmm. Well, he gave an explanation one day in a hotel room. He said, you know, people want to know and people are wondering why I did what I did. But, you know, God's timing is God's time. Right. And that's what we're trying to express today and tell you that it doesn't matter how people feel about you or when people want you to come forward. Mm -hmm. God's timing is God's timing. And that's one great thing about this, as we see starting off Jesus, for the first time, he's acknowledged that he is the Messiah. Mm -hmm. He is who everybody feared him to be. It was prophesied that the king of the Jews would come forward of the lineage of David. And if Jesus would have came out too fast and said that, who he was, we never would have made it to the, pet, the fact of Jesus being resurrected the right way. Um, if we look back in the book, in the Bible, one time, John the Baptist, who came before Jesus, tell everybody about him. He was in prison, and he sent some disciples forward, and he said, ask Jesus, are you the one that should come, or should we wait for another? Because even John had to know who Jesus was. And the thing about it then, if Jesus would have came forward and said who he was, mm -hmm. because the Jews was looking for that warrior king like David, mm -hmm. they would have went out, man, with pitchforks and shovels and, Anything they could That's figure good, out, 
go to war because they felt their king was here and Jesus knew it wasn't time. So even at Amen. that time, he could have tell, told them, yes, I am the Messiah. Mm -hmm. I am the son of the living God. But he didn't do it. He didn't do it. So he waited until this particular time to come forward and say, hey, you know what? I am the Messiah. And they gave him a king's welcome. Mm -hmm. That's good, bro. That's good. Yep. And it's um, real fast. I was looking up something. I jot down my notes. Guys. They gave him the hero's welcome. And that's what the palm trees are. Um, look back and we study ancient Roman times. Whenever warriors came in, whenever kings came in, they would meet them with the palm trees. Um, because it meant something. In a sense, it was like rolling out the red carpet for Jesus. Right. So Jerusalem had a population around 50,000 at the time. But because of the Passover event, the population in Jerusalem had already tripled. So we were looking at thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people already there for the Passover, for this holy event. Now Jesus, the Messiah, rolls in and says, the king is here. He gets met with that champion praise that that kingdom praise and that begins this holy week when jesus is walking into jerusalem all about time yep exactly all you Mr. Warren. exactly um that was great pastor charles um and in regards to this topic our our, our subject for the day I'm waiting on the right time right waiting on the right time um as pastor charles said um this was a time uh where it was a passover Passover celebration, many of us know the great story of when uh, Moses um, led the Israelites out of slavery from Egypt and they crossed the Red Sea. And uh, this is what they, what, what they were commemorating and celebrating. Uh, in a sense, this was their prom, right? This was their homecoming dance. Right? Right. This was their celebration. And in regards to waiting on the right time, what makes this story so significant is that as Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, um, what he did was he did something quite different that they didn't expect him to do. Um, what he did was, the scripture says that when he came into the town, that he rode on a donkey, really a, a donkey. I'm not talking about Shrek. Actually, I am talking about Shrek. Literally, like, <laughs> imagine Jesus riding on the donkey from Shrek. Like, what in the world? Like, why is he riding on a donkey? But this is what the scripture says in John 12, verses 14 through 15. John 12, verses 14, 14 through 15, and I'll be reading from the New Living Translation version. Jesus found a young donkey and wrote on it, fulfilling the prophecy that said, don't be afraid, people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming, riding on a donkey. So one, Jesus fulfilled a prophecy. Um, and two, what this represents, Jesus riding on a donkey, like, why you ride on a donkey? And say like he found a donkey at that. Like, like, imagine finding a bike and just riding it. Imagine finding a scooter and just riding it, right? This man found a donkey. Like, you know how they have those scooters on the side of the road and, and different things like that? You could just find one and ride right. it. That's pretty much what Jesus did. He found like the scooter, uh, the, the, the Uber scooter and, and started riding it. <laughs> but um, the reason uh, Jesus <laughs> rode on a donkey is because a donkey symbolizes peace. Now, back, back in uh, biblical times, whenever uh, a king or someone would come in a new town and ride on, on uh, a horse, it symbolizes it symbolizes war. It symbolizes we beefing, that, that we ain't cool. That, that, yeah, I'm going to come take all your, all your stuff, all your money, all your, your land. But whenever they rode on a donkey, if ever a king came into a new town, a new city, a new place riding on a donkey, it symbolized peace. And Jesus peace. wanted to come riding on a donkey because he wasn't trying to come to start a war. He wasn't trying to come to turn the people against each other. Jesus came to uh, 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 establish peace. And that's why he came into, into town riding on a donkey. And that's the subject matter I want to talk about today. In regards to waiting on the right time, um, we, we got to talk about peace. Simply because many of us in our lives right now, we don't have peace in relationships, friendships, sports, um, school, in the whole pandemic with the uh, COVID-19, the coronavirus going on. Many of us right now do not have peace. And I came to tell you that first I want to talk about our personal lives. Um, in order for you to know if someone is bringing peace into your life, it's to, if, are they riding on a donkey or are they riding on a horse? Are they coming into your life to, to, to be peaceful? Or are they coming into your life to start a war? And the Bible says in Matthew 7, 6, I believe, it says, um, identify them by their fruit, that is, by the way that they act. 
identify them by their fruit. That is by the way they act. The reason this scripture is saying identify them by their fruit is simply because of this, right? If we have a tree, if we have a tree, right? Um, the last thing that grows on the fruit is a tree, right? And in regards to a tree, once a tree grows, um, th that's all you see. And, and what I mean by that is whenever a relationship starts, whenever you first get cool with somebody, all you see is the tree, but you gotta wait on that fruit to grow. For example, if you're allergic to apples and, and, and you eat oranges, right? And you have two trees, right? And, and, and both of them grow and you're waiting on the fruit to grow. Eventually one of them go grow apples is what you're allergic to, which is drama, people being fake, people trying to hate on you, right? And then another one grows oranges, which is what you like and what you love. Then you know that, okay, sometimes I gotta wait on some fruit, right? And that's how you know, identify them by their fruit, right? Are they riding on a donkey, meaning peace, or are they riding on a horse? And people in relationships are going to try to come uh, and not ride in peace, but try to ride on a horse and ride in war. And it's going to be so many people in your life right now that they are not going to bring you peace. And you got to identify them by the what? Their fruit. And sometimes it takes fruit the longest to grow. So sometimes you got to wait it out. Sometimes you can't keep people too close, right? Sometimes you just can't call nobody ride or die off rip. Sometimes you got, okay, you know, yeah, I, I, you cute and all. I'm going to text you for like a little bit, but, you know, I'm going to wait before we go on a date. I'm going to wait before um, I spend my money on you, right? Sometimes you got to do that because some things and some people in your life are going to try to come to what? Wage war and not wage peace, right? And Jesus comes to wage peace. And if it's not peace, it's not who? It's not Jesus. If it's not peace, it's not Jesus. The second thing is in regards to the coronavirus, right? Um, the coronavirus, right, is, is, is scaring a lot of people. A lot of us um, have been affected by it, including myself and Pastor Charles. Um, we doing classes online. A lot of us are not able to uh, work inside the office. We got to work remote from home. We got to have classes remote from home, not able to go inside school physically. I will say this. Um, there's a story in the Bible in which Jesus uh, had to calm a storm. And Jesus and the disciples were on the boat. And Jesus was knocked out, y'all. Like, I'm talking about if it was a slump cam, like, bro, would have been on a slump cam. Like, Jesus was knocked. And disciples, like, woke up, like, oh, my God, Jesus is storming. What, what should we do with storming? And Jesus like, huh? huh? Uh, he said, oh, it, it's storming? And Jesus literally calmed the storm. He literally stopped the rain from raining. He stopped the storm from storming, right? And I say that to say that Jesus is, is peaceful even in the storms. That even the coronavirus going on right now, Jesus is in your home sleep. Jesus is in your bed sleep. Because why? Jesus is what? Peace. Jesus didn't flip out. Oh, 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 oh my gosh, you're storming. Jesus said, oh, oh it's storming, storming. All uh, right, he, he whipped crust in his eyes with slob on the side of his mouth. That man literally stopped the storm. And I came to tell you that um, the disciples was flipping and tripping out, right? But the thing is, they had Jesus right next to them, but they still was flipping out. But I want you to know, that the presence of a storm is not the absence of the presence of God. The presence of a storm is not the absence of, 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 a, of the presence of God. And we think just because we have a storm that God is not with us, that he's not listening, that he's not next to us. No. Jesus himself slept through the storm. He just needs you to do the same. Peace. Peace, y'all. Peace. Peace. And I want to piggyback off that story because uh, Pastor Warren reminded me of something. But that same story. And what's amazing that when Jesus mm -hmm. recruited all of his disciples, most of them were fishermen. Exactly. So they knew how to handle the water. They had been in storms before, but this mm. storm was so bad, they didn't understand how to do it. That's good. And they went down, and they woke Jesus up, and Jesus, he woke up sleeping, but he said, you guys are a little faith. Yeah, yep. You guys a little faith. A little faith, yep. And, and, and this tells you, regardless of the whatever storm you're in, or we're in as a nation, mm -hmm. um, could you imagine Jesus looking at us right now saying, you guys, a little faith. You're getting ready to celebrate. You're celebrating Palm Sunday. And could it be that we're going through this for a reason? Is it now that working towards resurrection, God is telling us, hey, guys, guys got to have faith in me. Mm -hmm. um, so we should give Jesus that hero's welcome. Yeah. But when you think about that story of what Pastor Warren just said, it puts me in my next point of even the people around Jesus, when we look at verse 16, didn't even understand who he was. Yeah. Um, he had recruited all these guys. Mm -hmm. They had enrolled with him. 
They saw him make the blind see. They saw him raise people from the dead. They see them stop storms. They see them make. They see them feed the multitude with some fish and bread. You fed all these people. They even seen them walk on water. Yeah. <laughs> and they still didn't get it. They still didn't grasp it of who they're really rocking with at the time. And, and that's one thing we're going to learn too, guys, as we progress in life, no matter where you are, whatever level you're on, the people around you won't even get it sometimes. Yeah. The people around you won't understand it sometimes mm -hmm. so when they walked into jerusalem on palm sunday even the disciples the ones who walked with him every day slept with him every day chilled with him every day prayed with him every day right. he provided for them every day they went from town to town every day mm -hmm. they didn't get it at the time and if you look at verse 16 it kind of throws you back because we go from present to future, then back. Because they're saying in verse 16, they did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, remember, Jesus wasn't glorified until he had risen again. Mm -hmm. So when he had died and he was risen again, they remembered the prophecy, they remembered the promises and everything he was going to give. But they didn't realize it at the time, and that's that timing piece. And God had, and Jesus had to be risen at a specific time. He had to ride in Jerusalem at a specific time. Mm -hmm. He came in on a specific animal. Minister Warren just said he came in on a donkey. He didn't come in on a horse. He came on a donkey and saying, I come in peace. Mm -hmm. He came in a peaceful manner. Now, was he met with peace? No, he wasn't. And that's one thing we have to learn also that we won't get met with peace all the time. We won't get met with the greatest things and people won't give us high fives all the time. That's good. People are going to glorify you sometimes. People are going to villain or make you a villain sometimes. That's good. But it's not up to you. Everything happens in God's perfect timing. So moving into Palm Sunday, remember this. It's not about the palm trees or the branches. It's about the fact that Jesus came in he knew it was time for him to go home he knew it was time for him to die and to be risen again to save all of us he knew it was that time so that's what's significant about this sunday mm -hmm. so the first time jesus publicly announced the king is here i am the messiah mm -hmm. he rode in the town in peace he didn't he didn't come ready to go to war he didn't come before the passover he came when Everyone was there. They were waiting on him. And they knew that this heir of the, of the throne of David was coming to town. He made this announcement. This was the right time to do so. Um, and so as we move into our conclu conclusion, always, guys, keep, keep your eyes on the prize. And remember, it's all about that perfect timing. Yeah, it's all about that perfect timing. Remember. Um, to just trust God on the right time with anything, with uh, getting accepted into school, with the coronavirus, when uh, this pandemic will go away, with um, your sports starting back up, trusting God even next year. Like this message may not be for even uh, someone right now, but this may be for someone a year from now, two years from now. Maybe you may not make the cheerleading team, the sports team or whatever, and you're like, God, when is my time? But something else may come about. Or, or, or God may not allow you, to, allow you to make the freshman basketball team soon because, you, you get the whole year of practice and practice and practice. And now you think you're going to try for junior varsity next year, but you end up making varsity because you had the entire year off to get better and work on your craft and work your skills. So just trust your timing. Um, if you feel like you're alone, if you feel like nobody, you have nobody to talk to, trust God's timing. Seek God, you know, seek God's face and pray and know that you're not alone. We're all in this together. Um, but just remember that perfect timing with everything in your life. We're, my, myself and Pastor Charles are trusting God's timing. You know, um, with, with, with certain with school, uh, with Pastor Charles and work, um, you know, we're trusting uh, God's timing as well. So this message not only um, is, is for you all, but it's for myself and Pastor Charles. So it is for us all. So um, we pray that this word has touched you. We pray that it has helped you in many ways. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, to this YouTube channel, uh, leave a comment below. Um, let's do this. Um, we would love if you could leave a comment 
about uh, something that you want to trust God's timing for. It could be trusting God's timing for a rekindled friendship, trusting God's time, God's timing for um, an athletic event, trusting God's timing for getting to accept into the school of your dreams, trusting God's timing for whatever it is that you, that you aspire. Uh, so we, we, we uh, challenge you to leave a comment below and below you will also see my comment and Pastor Charles comment as well about something that we plan to um, trust God's timing for. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, Pastor Charles, you want to close us in prayer? All right, guys, all eyes closed, head bowed. Dear God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, God, for just being alive. Thank you, God, yeah. for this Palm Sunday, God. Thank you for us understanding that everything works out in your perfect time. Even though we don't understand it now, we won't see it now, God. We know that in the end, you will be glorified through this. Um, so, God, it's my prayer that you bless this the part, this ministry, uh, bless the youth, bless the kids' ministry, Lord, bless Pastor Warren, Lord, bless our pastors, uh, bless Salem, Lord, just bless us all, God, in Jesus' name, God, we love you, we praise you. It's my prayer this week, God, that something miraculous is going to happen in all of our lives. We're all going to have a testimony at the end of this thing, and God, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Amen. So, guys, we love you. We miss you. Stay sanitized out there and stay clean. <laughs> Definitely. See y'all next Sunday. Hey. Easter. <laughs> Easter Sunday. That's right. See you guys next week.